Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Dolls, the United Federation of Doll Clubs YouTube channel. Today, our program is provided by Mr. Christopher Aylman. He is a member of the United Federation of Doll Clubs, and he has graciously invited us inside his home to see how he displays uh, some of his dolls. Before we get to that, I would like to make sure we remember, if you have comments, be sure you put them in the comments section. Remember to like, hit that thumbs up button, and subscribe. Remember there are no fees involved. Just subscribe. Um, so you don't miss your next adventure in dolls. Hey everyone, Chris here. Um, I was asked to do a video and to introduce not only myself, but also my collection to you. So a little bit about me before I do so. Again, my name is Chris. Um, I was born and raised in Chicago. And as I tell everyone, I'm a born collector. I've collected many different things over the years. And at the present time, which is the last collections I'm going to have, are doll houses and dolls. Now, one of the main questions that everyone asks me, what kind of dolls do you collect? And my answer to that is I have a variety of dolls in my collection. But the main things that I focus on are antique dolls. And within that realm, it, I always strive for originality, great clothes, and condition. Those are the items that I always look for in my dolls as I'm adding them to my doll collection. Now, as I've also mentioned, first and foremost, I am a dollhouse collector. I never had any intentions on being a doll collector, but when I was amassing these dollhouses, you needed to have little people to put in the, in the dollhouses. As a result, I have now, as of January 2022, I have now moved on to include larger dolls in my collection. So I'm standing in the entrance of our uh, house. And what I would like to stress to everyone, for me and my collection, it's not about having them in one cabinet and, and restricting them to one particular area. As you can see behind me, this is an idea of what, how I like to display parts of my collection. So we have our furnishings, a painting, things like that. But if you'll notice, there's this wonderful doll. And what I'm gonna actually do is take you on a tour throughout our home and show you the various dolls I have in my collection, okay? So as I was stating, we'll start with the first doll. This is about the second doll that I received of this height. She's about 22 inches. She's a German paper mache. I love her eyes, her face, the painting on them the curl here, her burlet hat, which is all original. But as I've mentioned, I'm really intrigued by clothing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin her around. And one of the things that I fell in love with are the buttons. These absolutely wonderful pearl buttons on the back of her. And you notice her dress is just so beautiful. Again, hearkening back to the idea of originality, condition, she's just a beautiful, beautiful example. But if you notice how lovely she is on display with all the different pieces. So what I'm going to actually do is take you into the living room. Now, as I said, I concentrate mainly on antique dolls. But here we actually have one of my newest dolls. And she's obviously a Shirley Temple. I wanted a Shirley Temple in my collection because I've always loved Shirley Temple um, movies. But one of the main reasons is I have a fond memory of one evening I spent with my grandfather and we watched um, the, uh, poor, uh, one of uh, Shirley Temple's movies. And this re reminds me of that every time I look at her and I really love her original dress, this button, which is original. As I'm told, some of them can be duplicated, but she has all of the details around it. Her dress has never been laundered. She has the factory original wig. And her condition from what I see is pretty good. And it was something, and I could live with this example in my collection. Then we go to the other side of the TV. And this is actually one of the first dolls I acquired. This is my Kessner. She has her original dress, 
her original wig, a beautiful hat. I love her little pin, but I love her face and her details here. I love the flowers in her hair. And what I like to do is, since I'm a collector, not just of dolls and doll houses, but anything that comes included with that. So these putts, sheep, but I'll scan back a little bit. And what I'd like to show you is I have this very nice china head. Now this china head is nothing, the doll itself is nothing special, but the dress, if you notice the dress is very early and has a wonderful look to her. But I like to create these vignettes where if you notice, I have a very beautiful sampler that I have on an easel and I rest them as a background. If you move on, I also happen to collect Stife. I have various uh, different versions of Stife and different periods of Stife. And I've had this monkey for a long time and I just really like how he looks there. But on the flip side, I actually have an oil painted cloth doll. Now, as many of you may know, Isana Walker. Well, Isana Walkers are a lot of money and I'm not, it's, she's just not, I don't have a drive to have one, but I love early primitive looking dolls. And when I saw her, I really was intrigued by her face, her overall presentation, her dress, and I just love her construction. And I thought, how neat would it be that I have this type of version of a oil painted cloth doll in my collection? And then what you'll notice, I actually have with her a Dean rag version of Mickey Mouse, and he's very early, but he's all original. And I just love his smile. Now, as we continue, as I've mentioned, I'm a dollhouse collector. So here's one of the corners in our living room. So we're actually in front of my gotch chalk. What I like to do is I like to leave the houses open sometimes because you can actually see inside of the houses. Now I'll do a different video at another time of the actual insides of the houses. But I'd like to show you, here's another example of the variety of dolls that I have. So we have this doll here is my wigged china head. And I love her because I know people call him Biedermeyer, but I love her face. And again, her dress is simply wonderful and she's in great shape. Then we have this particular doll. This doll was actually one of the first paper mache dolls that I bought, and I fell in love with her because of her glass eyes. I really like dolls that have glass eyes, but notice again, her clothes are really old and very original to her. Now I'm gonna step back and show you one doll that has nothing to do with any of the other dolls that I've had, but again, variety is this googly eye. It's a paper mache mask googly eye, and he's all original. And he's a really nice size. I like his eyes, his clothing. He's felt, his mohair wig. He's just wonderful. And I like adding and mixing different things together when it comes time to displaying the dolls. Now I'm gonna slowly walk around. There's one of our cats, her name is Iris. Oh, Iris, playing with the dolls. Now, in our kitchen, I went to a friend's house and they had a wonderful display on their counter. And I said to my partner, cause he really liked how it looked and, I, and he said, can we do that? And I said, yes, but everything has to be vintage. Can't buy new. So what I've done is I've taken an old little footrest Victorian. I've added my putts sheep and I've added this little animal here in this wonderful tree. But then we have this doll. Now, 
I'm gonna take a moment to explain why I bought this doll, aside from the fact that she's awesome. I love wooden dolls, early wooden Georgian English, that kind of look. But the prices can be kind of high. And I came across this doll. She's paper mache with glass eyes. She doesn't have a wig right now, but I'm gonna work on that. But she had this beautiful old little bonnet on her. Her clothing is just wonderful. She has the early blue leather arms. I've added a, like a little bent box on her, a little brush. And I put a little bit of tissue paper underneath her dress. And what I did was I actually added a little knot cloth or uh, knot um, like a doily or tablecloth underneath her to cover the stand. And I love to have her on display. Another little vignette in the home. Now, one of the other things that I would like to show you is I'm a fan of show and hut. And what I did was I've acquired several animals, a clown, the ringmaster, and a couple other little accoutrements that go along with it. And what happened was we were having a party here and there was nothing on top of this counter, uh, excuse me, cabinet here. And I had these pieces and I needed a spot to display them. And what I did was I actually used an old box for to give different heights to the pieces. And I just think they fill in the space really, really well. Show and Hut to me is wonderful because I love how they're constructed of wood. Most, all of the animals that I have are the later versions with the painted eyes, but they do have glass eyes. But one of the things that I truly, truly strive for is the original items, the cloths and the, and the outfits on them. And if you notice how wonderful the outfit is on him, it's an original uh, hoop that he has. And look at the, uh, the rug and the uh, triangle cover on the elephant. Quite beautiful. And I'll take one moment to show you. This was actually the first elephant that I acquired. Notice the difference. But I learned, I learned to look at the details. Now I can live with both, but I learned how to look at the details and to show how different the quality is between those two. I'm gonna go slowly. Again, we're still in our kitchen. And what I actually have up above is a shop. And what I actually have is I have a light that goes on in it. And she is a wonderful china head. Now, she's probably a Hurtwick china head, nothing special, but I wanna say two howevers. Number one, she was not very expensive. Number two, her clothes, Let's see if I can get up closer. Her clothes are so wonderful. And I just thought she really anchored the little shop that I have. And what I love about this is that as you pull away, or if you're in the kitchen, you'll see how she's actually on display and fills that corner of the room really, really well and very, very nicely with a nice whimsical feel to it. Okay, I'm gonna continue over here. Now this is our dining section. And this is one of my favorite houses that I have. Now I don't have a favorite house, but this is definitely one of my favorite houses. I'm actually planning on doing a program at convention about this house. So I won't go into detail about the house, but what I will show you are the two paper mache dolls that I actually have on display by it. We'll start with her. She's wonderful. She has a wonderful face. Oh, let me. She has a wonderful face. Absolutely lovely outfit. Now, there is a little bit of fraying here, or melting, however you want to call it. But I, as a collector, am forgiving of that because it's original. 
and I love the original look to her. And I just recently found this little hat on Ruby Lane. And then he is one of my treasures. He's a, again, paper mache soldier. And I absolutely love his outfit. Notice his Dresden paper, the faux fur on his jacket. Again, still more Dresden paper. As you turn him around, the details on the coat are wonderful. And what's fascinating is that's the original color that it was, but it's faded. Now see, now that may bother some other collectors and that's fine if that's, if that's their preference. But for me, original is what I prefer. And also because it's sunny today, you might be able to pick up the details on the little coat and the jacket that he has. And he came to me from a Thierry Alts auction. And I thought that they both really go nicely together. Okay. Now I'm going to actually walk you around and continuing the tour, we're going to actually go into our office. And what I'm going to do is take you into one of my big doll houses. So we'll start at the top. I'm going to open the top and just show you inside of it. This is my Mansur dollhouse, okay? And inside we have, this is one of my big purchase, my first big purchase. This is a paper mache doll that I have. Obviously she's paper mache. Her dress though, all original with the velvet. It's hard to tell, but it's all hand stitched. And I absolutely love her. I got her from Carmel Doll Shop. I've gotten many things from them and they've always been wonderful to deal with. The next room I'm gonna show you is the drawing room. And these are among some of my favorites. I'll take a moment to tell you a little bit about them. So we'll start with him. Oops, we'll start with him. Now, as I mentioned, I like antique dolls. And I initially started with bisque dolls, German bisque dolls for the dollhouses because of their sizes. I've moved on to other types of dolls, but he is an exception. He's a soldier, his hat has this wonderful old original metal kind of uh, material. His jacket is wonderful. He has his sword, his rope, his belt. His feet are very small, but also he has these absolutely wonderful, tiny, early brown painted bisque hands. He's one of my treasures. Now she is a Grodner tall. Now, the one thing is that she doesn't have feet, but what she does have, kind of hard to see and I'll focus. You might see some black on the edges of her coat or her dress, I mean. She is what you would call a pen wipe. Isn't that amazing that someone actually used this as a pen wipe at one time? but I love her details, her beadwork, and everything there. And then what I'm gonna do is actually close with my kitchen. And I just wanna show one last thing, and this is another Grodner tall that I have, but she's much later. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and stop there and just let you know that it's been a joy sharing my collection with you. And again, my name is Chris. Hello. We hope you enjoyed the program today. We'd like to thank Mr. Christopher Aylman for providing the program, um, his time, his expertise, and his dedication to uh, UFDC. We appreciate all of it. Become a member. 
of the United Federation of Dog Clubs today. Simply click on the link at the bottom of the page. It will take you directly to the website. You can fill out the forms, become a member, and when you're there, be sure to tell them Karen sent you.